What's up guys, it's your boy, Big Shot Eagle, and today we'll be playing Among Us. Wow, sus? Imposter? Ooh, I saw you then. Oh, Prisoner 456 has won the Squid Games. What happened to me? Squid Games? Yeah, my mind is messed, bro. <laughs> It's your boy, Big Shot Eagle. Welcome back to the Fireside Podcast. I'm here with Joe today, aka Big Shot Albatross. <laughs> We're going to be what? talking. <laughs> We're going to be talking for the second time on this podcast. Conspiracy <laughs> theories. Joe, are you excited? No. No, so. no, you know what? I should have some of that. Oh, motivation right. yeah, yeah. I like, was gonna say, yeah. bro, this isn't a time for your negativity. <laughs> let's, let's get yeah. excited, man. Let's do this. Come on. Yeah, episode 20, uh, I will add as well, of this podcast. Joe, did you know Nazi zombies are real? The Yeti exists. We are living in a massive black hole, and alien spacecraft are currently orbiting the Earth. Did you know any of those things? Because they're you... all true, according to some of the theories I have. <laughs> according to a WikiHow <laughs> article I read one time in the comment yeah. section or something. Yeah. Um, I knew the Nazi zombies were true because uh, Call of Duty, uh, it's a game oh, on Call yeah, of Duty. Yeah, yeah. So they filmed some in like, the cutscenes, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's let's let's get excited for that, guys. Everyone listening, let's get excited for whatever Glenn just talk, spoke about. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so anyway stay tuned for that that is coming up but first of all uh joe you were talking to me actually a little bit before we recorded just now about your plans for your youtube channel what are they right so firstly i want to just put it out there to everybody it makes you sound a little bit self-centered i was talking about glenn's plans for his youtube channel but i guess it's a really good way to segue into you know like Oh yeah, because then I we'll got at my one. ones, we'll, <laughs> but we'll get to that point. We'll get to that. Point. That's how the podcast works. It's it's formatted, you know, in a certain way. It's a All show. Right. It's professional. But um, I was speaking with Glenn over here, and we've hit our twentieth episode today, which is the one you're listening to. And I was thinking, wow, we've been consistent with this, and we haven't ever like backed down from any of the issues we've been facing. There's been times where we've had to re-record episodes and we haven't been like, oh yeah, just leave that, bin it, we'll do it next week. And it's yeah. something that I think both Glenn and I have suffered with with our personal channels. And I think it's something to do with the fact that like it's like we owe the other person um, to come here and make an appearance. Whereas if it's just our own YouTube channel, it's easier just to be like, hey, I'm not doing this. And the only person you're letting down is yourself. So you just give up pretty quick. <clears throat> and we were speaking Thanks. and we were saying that we need to get our own personal YouTube channels back up and running. And since my work life balance has gotten a lot better since I've been working from home now, um, I've decided to plunge back in. And I remember thinking like, you know what? I enjoyed making those videos. I really did. And I spoke with Glenn for a, quite a bit of time about it. And me and him are on the same boat. We're going to start our solo projects back up again and hopefully it will bring more eyes to this podcast too you know yeah hopefully well obviously our big plan is to have like a trifecta of you know joe working on his channel me working on my channel putting out some like sick videos that we want to do and then with the podcast channel it kind of like hopefully people can find us through one one of them and then subscribe to the other two in theory Infinity. This is YouTube we're talking about. I don't know if we actually clarified that, but for people listening on Spotify and whatnot, yeah, we all we have like a YouTube channel each and we've got the podcast channel. Oh yeah, um, completely forgetting that. We're out on all audio platforms, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah. So How for could you everyone forget on that, the, <laughs> for everyone on the all audio platforms, yeah, YouTube is the only place you're gonna be able to see this stuff because like if we put our personal videos on Spotify and stuff, it wouldn't make much sense, I guess because they're visual things, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, no, one, no one would be easy. <laughs> Although no. Spotify, you, on uh, Joe Rogan, he can put like the whole video on Spotify. Like that it's clearly special, something though. they're um, trying to, uh, I think uh, another podcast has done it. The uh, the Fellas, they're like a yeah, but UK podcast as I well. I think the other thing is just to clarify for everyone, um, our personal channels are not podcast based, you know? Um, Glenn oh, no, is not. a bit, 
Glenn, Glenn <clears throat> is in all directions at the moment. We're trying to find his like main focus and discuss like what he's passionate about and what he should focus on. And I'm pretty much just in the gaming vein. Uh, it's just pretty much all gaming content. But with room to expand in the future if I've got time, you know? But your thing is that um, that, that series of yours that I want to see is that 100 games to play before you die. That sounds, that's oh, a sick idea. Oh, what a plug. What a plug. Look at this guy <laughs> right, here, mate, man. We can plug. It's our podcast, mate. Oh, yes. People have to listen this. to it. So, you know? <laughs> just real quick, I had a series called 101 Games to Play Before You Die, and I got about five in. And what happened was, great. yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, at this rate, it won't be all of them before I die. But you're gonna you know die I mean? first, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, I had this series, and I, I really enjoyed it because it meant I was playing games that I were well out of my comfort zone. Do you know what I mean? I was like, what even is this game? And all of my reactions were pretty much genuine, like, what is going on? But I think I hit a bit of a point where. I just, like usual, gave up on a project. I do that a lot. I haven't given up on this one, which is good, but Glenn will tell you I'm very flaky in terms of, like, like I'll be like, oh, I want to be a DJ, I want to be a musician, and do it for, like, a solid, like, month or two, and then just give up, and then, you know, yeah. Yeah, you've, you've been... Uh, uh, one thing that surprised me about, about you when we started this podcast, I thought, like, there's going to be... If, if either of us just decides I oh, give up and like just pack it all in I thought it might be you but yeah. now I think if anything it would be me because yeah. you've been so consistent and like uh, and yeah uh, um you even had like a little breakdown one day to you when we when <laughs> our footage got corrupted or something like that happened it, I think it was it actually was just... my my footage so we couldn't post anything because it was like half the podcast didn't exist and we it had was to a rough, it. it was it was a really rough day but I came back we re-recorded that. We're not yeah. going to point out which episode, but you can tell. Oh yeah, you can tell. You can tell for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the other thing I was going to say real quick is like, I think it something changed in me with this stuff. Not that you guys want to keep listening to this babble, but um, it was well, more got an, that they got about an hour left of it, mate. So, you know, <laughs> don't just yet. <laughs> I owed Glenn sort of thing, and once I got about like I don't know ten. 11 episodes in i turned around to my girlfriend and just said like yo listen like if you don't actually make an effort to make a change it's never gonna happen like i was like if i don't become consistent and i keep talking about oh i want a youtube career i want this and want that and then i just give up after two months or a month it's never gonna happen so i gotta stop saying that and just do and luckily fireside podcast has given me the chance to do so now it's just a matter of you know resolving the personal stuff but what about you i've yeah. spoken in length about my side of things what about you well just to add, just add to that real quick i'd say what what you just said there could apply to pretty much anything not necessarily oh, just like a yeah. youtube channel but you know going to the gym or like building any kind of habit or anything just like it you, all you have to do is just like keep sticking to it no Stick matter what and like if something it, yes. goes wrong like like happened a few weeks ago with that episode it was like most people like we both said didn't we like most people or even old versions of us probably would have just been like it's done like we, we just miss a week because yeah. like that was just, just a disaster and then just give up on it um but like we literally just went back in even though we just absolutely were not feeling it we just went back in and just plowed through the episode just got the whole thing done and i, I would say there were some funnier moments in the re-recorded version than we even had in the first, in the first <laughs> one, just because we were both so like went in just so sort of given up on life and then it just i don't know it just went to yeah went to hell basically but it was a it was a funny one um but yeah i made a vlog lately um check that yeah out. it's not exactly banging views i will say but too fair, i haven't posted for like two months or something so it's not really to be expected um but yeah we went to the uh, the longest aqueduct in great britain and the tallest aqueduct in the world and where is this? It's in Pontusishkish or something. Oh, <laughs> I can't lovely, say it. But really it's near Shangokan. But okay, it, it's a so it's, big, it's big, big North aqueduct. North Wales based. Yeah. And we just went on like a little road trip out there and I filmed it. And I used like, um, you know, the Johto Journeys Pokemon anime theme. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I used that as like the road trip theme tune. And it was, oh, I think it works so well. Um, yeah. I wanted it to feel like a kind of triumphant return to my channel kind of <laughs> so um, yeah. I paid like sort of a lot of like fanfare music and stuff like that well, um, which is kind of funny looking at you didn't get any sort of copyright ID thingy for that 
I think what it is is like with Nintendo stuff um, that they want you to play their games on like a gaming channel. So a lot of the Nintendo soundtracks possibly aren't going to be copyright stroke. Stroke. Um, Don't quote me on that. There's probably going to be a lot of cases of that happening. But I think in general, gaming uh, soundtracks are are fine because like they're they're not going out mass copyrighting people. Otherwise, no one's going to play the games on their channels and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And think how many poke tubers there are. Like, you know, Loads. there's quite a lot, and they all talk with like the Pokemon theme in like the background. So I'm like, well, if they can do it, <laughs> you I know. can do it. Yeah. Why not? Um, yeah. Even though my video is nothing to do with Pokemon, I just I just thought the music captured the feel of the video quite well. So You're back. I went for it. Making yeah. a vlog. Hell yeah. And what can we expect from you in the future? Bro. Um, travel videos i hope i've got like a few travel plans coming up for the first time in a while and that's always been like like the first the, the reason i wanted to make youtube videos was because i saw this uh video by marcus butler who funnily enough doesn't even make videos anymore but he made yeah. this travel vlog in mykonos and it was just like a sick like day out with him and his girlfriend just like having a sick time and filming it and it's like you could tell that just by filming it they were like adding to the fun and uh, then they made this experience that you can watch from home and enjoy and it was like a real artistic way of like pairing up the sound um you know the music that was overlaid with the clips and how they all flowed sort of really well with the um music and it just made like this vibe that they probably it probably wasn't even that good for them when they were there compared to how good it seemed to you watching it so to be able to create an experience like that i just wanted to do that you so, see yeah. in in our private conversations i said to glenn i did say that seems to be your thing do you know what i mean that seems to be like some of the videos that he shot in the past and like the way he pairs the music up and the experience and stuff is what he's speaking about and it's really well done to be honest with you and it deserves a lot more eyes on it so go check them out on glenn's channel yeah (laughs) awesome yeah do that guys (laughs) um i will say my actually my most viewed video that isn't um, about YouTube boxing, which I think doesn't count. But like <laughs> my most YouTube, vi- my most viewed video after that is uh, the Albufeira vlog that I filmed out yeah. in Portugal, um, I- and like, I can see why. Like I can watch that back and get like a really good sort of vibe from it. And I think if you're giving like a genuine, like good feeling video to people, like they're gonna like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Of course, of course, and not just that. Not to get on the morbid side or anything, right? Real quick. But do you know once we're gone? And you've got videos like that that are out there, right? No, you've got videos that are out there. I I was just thinking about this. It is nice in a way because we were... I'm not going to get into this topic because it's not your news and all that stuff. But we were discussing like how some people are getting like... You know, like AI generated versions of their dead relatives where they put in all of their stuff and their voice and stuff and they can talk to their dead relatives. Oh, that sucks. I was like, that's creepy. But I was like, if you've got a video of like someone who's passed and you can go back and like watch and it's like so much content of them in real time talking to you and having a laugh and stuff i was like bro that must be nice too but that's yeah i guess i guess (laughs) yeah i don't know i don't know if i'd want like my great great grandkids watching vlogs i made when i was like 18 (laughs) you know hey kind of mad because i was like cringy as hell in some of my old videos we, we don't know what's going to come tomorrow, you know what I mean? Like, and, you know, for for me, when I see, like, pictures of my grandparents when they were young, I'm always like, oh, wow, do you know what I mean? Even if it was a little bit cringy when they're watching the YouTube video back, it, it's still like, wow, that was my granddad? Yeah. Like, wow, do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, it'd be cool if you, yeah, to be fair, it would be cool if you could see what, like, your great-grandparents were like, like, in, in a video. Because, yeah, I don't know. I guess this generation now just everything there's going to be videos and stuff of everyone it like starting yeah. pretty much right now that's just going to be normal so the amount of videos of babies they're gonna in 20 yeah. years time they're gonna be like my whole life was filmed up until this point you know what i mean it's yeah mental yeah that is crazy to think about you know what else is crazy or who else is crazy on news <laughs> news yeah. uh, uh jake paul's crazy uh, uh no 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 he's no. crazy uh I, I don't know. He seems like... It's, it's not that crazy, actually, but Donald Trump is launching a social media app called Truth Social on oh. iOS on in February. Uh, February the 21st, apparently, according to a listing on the App Store. Now, regardless of what you think of Donald Trump, I think the idea of a social media 
where nothing is censored is a good idea in this day and age where you know some people's opinions are just being shut down and it's like then they end up being right <laughs> and stuff like that happens um i don't know i think that's a good idea but whether donald trump's like the one to do it i don't know what do you think what do you make of that so I think that this is a debate I have with people all the time and it okay. gets it gets on my nerves a little bit where people go freedom of speech my freedom of speech and then they're on Facebook and they don't understand that Facebook doesn't like it's a private business it's a private place you're at yeah, and you've got exactly. their own terms that you agree to it, freedom of speech doesn't apply there do you know what I mean if you go and like you know I don't know, dock someone or send a death threat or something, of course you're going to get a ban or something like that, right? Now, um, this whole no censor thing, right? I think it's perfect to just look from the outside because I, I think it'd be hilarious to just watch these people. Like, you know, like if you go into a zoo and all of these like <laughs> massive like MAGA people and stuff like that and these Trump fans and stuff will just be like, Oh yeah, I think this. I think that, and just throwing the wildest stuff out. I think brilliant, amazing. But I don't know where I'm going with this. So I don't know where you're going. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I reckon uh, you're you're definitely right in that. Yeah, okay, Facebook is a private thing, so they should be able to moderate. And obviously, stuff like death threats and that, there should be just an automatic. Like the same as in real life, you shouldn't be able to threaten someone that they're gonna die. Yeah. Like. You know, that's just kind of like common sense, I would say. But um, maybe certain words are banned or certain types of messages, like give everyone the chance to block people who are sending them stuff like that, that kind of thing, fine. Um, but when it's like, when someone is saying, putting information out as like a status with something that's like arguably true, it just, you don't know. Yeah, you see this a lot with like the COVID stuff when at first a lot of misinformation was being spread and some of it was being limited but that limited information ended up being true <laughs> so it's like who's actually saying what is right and what is wrong um wouldn't it be better if we could all see every side of the argument and make up our own minds as to what is true um especially when it comes to big like worldwide issues like that um and so would it not be good if there were some a place maybe not facebook or so but something like it like a twitter or something like that where there is no regulation other than you can sort of follow or block whoever you want and that's it and like maybe a direct death threats and stuff are illegal or banned or something like that you yeah know? i mean but, but no opinions should be shut down in my in my opinion it's weird because usually i'd be of the op opposite opinion uh, like i i think we're on two different sides of the coin on this one where like i'd be right. saying yeah well here's the thing um, the reason why certain opinions get shut down is because misinformation in past has led to pretty bad things happening and it seems like on a global scale misinformation is causing it's, it's just increasing every year and people are just listening to a random comment on an MSN article and be like that's the truth I know it's the truth and they're not listening to facts and I guess studies. that's up to them though isn't it like no, surely no, yeah, if you but... want the truth you follow like what say the NHS are saying or like what a top doctor is saying about well when it comes to COVID at least you'd follow those people rather than like I don't know but a celebrity difficult... like Kim Kardashian the difficulty or <laughs> is people are stupid do you know what I mean people are but really like that's stupid. their problem you know yeah but then it becomes a it's global up to them if they problem. want to be stupid it, it becomes a global problem when what, all stupid of these people? stupid <laughs> yeah when all of these stupid people go and gather in stupid groups and think Oh, I found oh, you're never going to be able to stop that though. If you limit uh, some stupid groups, you're just going to get other stupid groups, as we're seeing. You, you, yeah. But here's the thing: back before the internet, you didn't used to have that. If someone had a stupid opinion in school, do you know when we were in school? They just get laughed at, wouldn't they? Yeah, they just yeah. get laughed at, and then they'd think, "Oh, well, maybe my opinion isn't right," and then they'd think about it, and they're forced to confront different opinions, right? But in this day and mm. age, people go into their um, echo chambers and they go like, everyone agrees with me, I'm staying here. And they don't listen to actual proven research. But my main point, what I was going to say is, usually I'm on the opposite side of the coin saying that. But the fact of the matter is, is that things like companies like Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that, 
should also uh, also not like this brilliant decider of what's right and wrong because we've seen in the past exactly. that Facebook definitely a disgusting <clears throat> monster. Facebook are the worst, and you know. Uh, on Facebook podcasts, if we're on there, uh, no, they're amazing, but no, they're the <laughs> worst are, for this there, stuff. Yeah. They, they're, they're terrible for this stuff. Do you know what I mean? They are the worst, and it's been proven time and time again that they love that because that's what generates the money. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, bro. Well, but- also, they've kind of got an obligation to be sort of ad ad friendly and stuff like this, which yeah. a lot of yeah. which is a kind of problem when you're trying to restrict controversial people. You know, I'll use Trump as an example, getting banned on Twitter. Whether banning him is the right idea? Possibly not. Like, you know, maybe some of what he says is a bit whack, but like, not, I don't know. To, to totally ban whack. someone just based on an opinion they have, I don't know about that. Um, no matter who it is. And, and imagine, okay, here's another case for you. So say now you're, you know for a fact you are the victim of something, some some big wrongdoing or something like that. And your only way of kind of just in your, justifying yourself is by saying on social media, look, this is what happened to me. Um, you know, this is how it is. This is my side of the story. And then everyone uniting against you and being like, you're wrong. And then reporting you to Twitter saying, ban this person. And you know you were right the whole time. And you get banned and then you can't say yeah, why you're right. You know what I mean? Like that sort of thing. It's scary, right? Yeah, but in all honesty, do you know anyone that's happened to you? Like, and you know, if we're talking no, about Donald Trump, no, but you see Trump, it like yeah, but, all the time. You know, if you're talking about Donald Trump, I, I'm pretty sure he didn't get banned for whack opinions because he kept spouting them time and time again. I'm pretty sure he got banned for inciting riots and what happened in America and stuff like like it was to the yeah. point where it was like you're getting banned because you're rallying a bunch of people to go and commit crimes do you know what i mean that's different that's like you know yeah it's not an opinion at that point and then depends how you look at it i guess but then can twitter sit there and be like well i just wash my hands of it they've let somebody with a massive following go up and say hey everybody go out and attack this thing and they've let it happen they're just like well yeah you know what can we do Um, did he actually say that did he say go out and attack yeah i'm pretty sure it was pretty direct i guess that's a button. violent enough um uh, if, if that's if that's exactly what he said i don't know enough about this to know for sure but like <laughs> if that's exactly what he said then i can see why they would ban it but also yeah i don't know it's a, it's a tricky one maybe someone with that much power if they repeatedly say like things like that that are absolutely intended to incite a riot then maybe but also i would say there's been arguably bigger people or people on par with Trump who have said things that have directly started riots and you know led to other things that have been just as bad but then they haven't been banned and then what do you do ban everyone who says anything controversial or is it up to like people to make the right choice and you know not riot (laughs) I don't know you know yeah it's you've got to find a balance somewhere yeah yeah I think people these days take being banned on social media way too seriously because, do you know, if you were to go back to, like, what, 2009, maybe, and someone yeah. said, yo, so-and-so just got banned on Facebook, no one would care. But now it seems to be this big, like, you know, like, oh, there's been an injustice, so-and-so was banned on Facebook for saying this. And it's like, bro, chill. Like, yeah, people get banned yeah. on Xbox Live for saying, like, <laughs> mean things. And they don't go out and be like, oh, I've been silenced. I called somebody a really nasty word on Xbox. And I've, oh, my God. And everyone's going mental. <laughs> people just go, get on with your life. Do you know what I mean? There's there's True. more to life than social media. And I know social media is a massive part of life. It now. is some people's, like, careers, though, isn't it? Like, for him, yeah, for example. Yeah. Again, I don't mean to keep bringing this back to Donald Trump. It's just because I'm looking at a picture of Donald Trump's face because Ew. he's made the social media thing, apparently. <laughs> um, so it keep, my brain just keeps going back to him. But, like, um, oh, I totally forgot what my train of thought was going then. What did you literally just say, then? I said that people <laughs> make social media, like, a big, massive thing in life. Now, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and then I said... Um, to some people, it's it is literally their careers, and so yeah. to ban them, it's like a direct inhibitor on their career. So, say you're part of a political party and you don't have social media, how are you meant to compete with someone who's in a political party who does have social media? You know, like how are you meant to balance that? I mean, he he's managed it just fine, apparently. 
Like he yeah. was still on Twitter True. when he lost, and then um, you know, uh, what's it called? He's still knocking about now, and he's still making this app. You know, yeah. like people yeah. find ways around. This, I get you knocked know? down, and I get up again. <laughs> no, no. Uh, talk about knock down, get back up again. I've I still haven't received a reply from Mr. Trump about my calling out to a Taekwondo match or whatever that was. Oh damn! Back in damn. the day, hey, maybe he you've got a DM in. You got DM him oh, on his wait, Truth Social. Um, I was, uh, yeah, account. I was about to say, but but <laughs> wait, I can't DM him on Twitter. He's banned there. I can't DM him on uh, Facebook. He's banned there. Oh, well, on February twenty well, first, you'll be able to DM him on Truth <laughs> Social, just for you, mate. <laughs> oh, great. And he can't duck it either. He can't block you because it's you know Truth Social. Yeah, so, exactly. I'll say so. He right. can't duck you this time. You're not censoring me. I'm calling yeah. you out. <laughs> uh, speaking of getting uh, knocked down, as you quite quite uh, smoothly put <laughs> that leads quite well into our next topic which is Tyson Fury guess who Tyson Fury heavyweight champion of the world is fighting it's not going to be a YouTuber is it no 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 it's not is it going to be an, <laughs> M- uh, an MMA person ah yes so okay. uh, Tyson Fury recently twi- t- 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 tweeted out <laughs> he said who would who would like to see me fight this beast? Boxing rules with UFC gloves. Bear in mind, UFC gloves are like tiny. They're like barely something covering your knuckle, right? Um, it's like one step up from like bare knuckle, okay? And he's calling out Francis Ngannou, who's like the possibly the heaviest hitting UFC fighter in history. Now, Tyson Fury, amazing boxer, but he's not the heaviest hitting boxer. So... This could be dangerous for either of them. So, Ngani is going to be uh, very used to having the smaller gloves, whereas Tyson Fury isn't. He's used to having big gloves that can protect his face. So you could say maybe it's dangerous for him. But when it's limited to boxing rules, Fury's footwork and movement, I don't know if you've ever seen him fight Tyson Fury, but he's like elite at throwing feints and um, doing these little awkward movements and being fast as hell. Uh, for how Which big he is. Which is wild. Yeah, because yeah. he's a huge man. Huge guy, huge guy. Um, yeah. And I think his boxing technique alone could cause real, real problems for Francis Ngannou, who I don't I don't think will be able to land much of a hit on Tyson Fury. And Tyson Fury without um, protection on his knuckles or with like very very slight protection on his knuckles being UFC gloves which I think are four ounce don't quote me on that but that's very very light and barely anything there um just with his accuracy I think could cause real real health problems for Francis Ngannou what do you reckon to that matchup um, I reckon that as unprofessional as it is my mind just went like back to the last topic and went hang on a minute we're not a political channel. Why were we discussing that? Goodness me. But, um, um, yeah, I think it's what... I don't know. I have. A, I feel like I've got the same opinion time and time again in that um, the boxer's going to win because it's in boxing. And we've seen that UFC people... With UFC to, gloves, though. I know, but... Meaning he can't defend how he usually defends. Basically. I know, but the thing is, even though, like... Listen, I'm <clears throat> someone who's never boxed or done UFC, so I'm not like this, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about, is what I'm going to say first, right? But I, I feel like it's just like, I don't know, like, there's been UFC people that have come over and then been beaten by YouTubers in boxing, and I know it's okay, fair enough, it's with boxing gloves, but it's like, I don't think the gloves are going to change the result that much, and not just that, but is this thing mm. confirmed? Or is it uh, like... I think, it's, I think it's in talks, it's just um, Nganu is... L- is at the end of his UFC contract, I believe. So he's trying to right. renegotiate his contract so that he can um, both box and do UFC. Okay. And uh, this is why he's talk- uh, calling out um, Tyson Fury. Because Wait, he called out Tyson Fury? I thought yeah. Tyson Fury... Oh. No, no, because he wants to do- take part in boxing because basically he's not making as much money in UFC. This has been a huge... This has been the whole beef pretty much between like Jake Paul and Dana White. Jake Paul's basically making the huge point of you can get you, this is how much money you can earn from a fight and he's, he's basically really riling up Dana White uh, UFC president for those who don't know um, <laughs> I, <laughs> but yeah like it, it, it's a it's an interesting one because I think it, it could be really dangerous for either of them because Ngannou in UFC can fall back on his wrestling to 
defend himself, right? Same as why Tyron Woodley got beaten by Jake Paul. He couldn't use his usual um, combat defensive tactics that he knows that he's been trained in. But also, Tyson Fury can't defend himself the same way because he's got smaller gloves. Um, you know, in UFC fighters, they tend to use like a longer guard to try and parry um, parry shots away. I don't, I don't know if you've ever seen like how, how they fight. They kind of parry shots away rather than having a guard up like this. Um, yeah. Because having just your hand there isn't enough because you can punch around it so easily if, if it's not a big boxing glove, right? And so it could be really bad for Tyson Fury as well because if he gets hit straight on by Francis Ngannou who again is like a really heavy hitter maybe that's going to be really bad for him if he can't defend against it um, but the reason I say Fury would win this is because Fury has taken huge shots from Deontay Wilder even though that it was with bigger gloves and he's shown this like amazing will to just get back up and also his accuracy his pinpoint accuracy is so impressive I think he's going to cause Ngannou problems so yeah I, do, I do, you, do, you, do you agree with in that? In my unprofessional <laughs> opinion, I agree with that 100%. Sweet, yeah. Sweet. yeah, and I just thought it was an interesting one. I know you're not the biggest like combat sports fan, but bro, on YouTube, on online in general right now, I think combat sports are probably like the most talked about thing right now. Um, and I think, I think uh, we need to have... Uh, there's a specialist I know who we could get on for a particular like combat sports-themed episode. Um, you'll know who it is as well. I'll tell you after the podcast, but... Um, yeah, that might be one that you guys can look forward to who are MMA or boxing fans and whatnot. So, well, yeah. talking about what's popular on YouTube and not in combat sports, did you Big hear shot eagle. that? No, no <laughs> way in hell. Oh. Did you hear that Logan Paul bought $3.5 million worth of Pokemon cards? Oh, did yeah. Did you hear about this and whole all thing? Fake, and it was all G.I. Joe cards. Yeah, that's a um, yeah. good video, you think though. Do you think? Did you watch the video? Yeah. Do you think Bro, his it editor was, is sick? Hit, uh, you, what's it called? Hayden. Do you think that it was a? Um, do you think it was a staged thing? Do you think it was like something that, like you know, to get views, or do you think um, that's actually happened? I think it happened, but he's, from what I've heard, he's already got his money back. So I don't think he was ever in like much danger of losing, uh, the three point five million. I think um, when he bought the box, I think it was probably a bit of a gamble anyway. Like, because it was, um, I don't know if you saw the way it was packaged, but it looked like, <laughs> I don't know, to me anyway, it, it just looked, looked kind of dodgy. Yeah, yeah, it was like solid taped up and stuff. And then when they evaluated it, the guy said like, um, the, the tape was like trustworthy tape or something, <laughs> I'm not too sure. What? But apparently they had certified that it was, that they were real cards, but they had been repackaged or something like that. Um, but then apparently, yeah, they had it, the box had been opened somehow, and so the cards had been replaced. Why three point five million? Like, how many cards were there supposed to be in there, and what cards exactly? I think it was like six of the original booster boxes, like the base set. So um, that's worth like a box full of packs. Million? The original ones, yeah. Jeez, wouldn't be surprising, man. yeah. Um, you know, I've got a bunch of original Pokemon cards and stuff like that that are not. Are they about. are they base set? Are they mint? Um, there's, they're in really good condition. I've kept them in good condition since I was like six, oh, seven. Yeah. Where'd, um, you, where'd you live again, just for the audience? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, if you want to pop around my house, yeah. <laughs> um, be handing out free Pokemon cards. Yo, we should have an episode where we like go through our Pokemon card collection and like just show each other what cards we've got and see if we've got any that are worth anything and stuff just for the, just for the then, viewers. That'll be the big break. We'll sell one card for like 10k and buy a studio. Yeah. And that's or that. we could give away one to like the 100th subscriber of Fireside Podcast or something. Goodness me, that okay, much wait, money. Okay, wait, thousandth. I don't know. 100,000th <laughs> subscriber yeah, 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 of Fireside maybe, Podcast. Maybe. Goodness me. Not just That'd be a sick episode, though. Or like a segment that we do like at the end of one of the episodes or something like that. No, I think that could be a full episode. I've got like a good fold of Pokemon cards, like the Same. old ones. Yeah, we yeah. should go through those. Well, yeah, Logan Paul did like a... Um, oh, sorry, go on. What were you going to say? No, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, Logan did a live stream like a while ago that broke records because he bought like all the old booster boxes or as many as he could find anyway. And there was like five or six there and he opened them all live on stream and uh, gave cards away on the stream to people who bid for them. And so they 
I, I think that him just doing that up the value of a lot of the old booster boxes so then when it came came to be him buying some again they'd gone up in value a lot so that's probably why they came to 3.5 million um it's it's yeah, mad it's mad. It, it is mad, mad. yeah how much like, collectors will pay for anything crazy people people are really like what is the word um, oh, grafting. They are grafting yeah. these days for money and collectibles and stuff. So Pokemon cards is one. NFTs is the new one on the scene. Yeah. Do you know Bro, Pokemon I mean? cards are like real NFTs. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't they? And then, and then you got Funko Pops if you want to get into all of that stuff. And then yeah, you got like yeah. cryptocurrencies and stuff. And it's it really feels like people are grafting on levels that I've never seen before, you know? Yeah. The maddest one I've heard recently is, I don't know if you heard of a thing called Sandbox. No. So I it's like, think so. you can buy real estate in like the virtual world. So you buy like an acre of land in the virtual world. So for when everyone's in the metaverse, you'll be like, you'll probably be like the richest person there because you've got like acres of land when it was cheap. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> bro, that's probably the way we should be thinking. But you don't know if sandbox is going to be the one that ends up being the total metaverse or if you've got a load of land in sandbox and then it ends up being like facebook box or something like that that ends up being the um i wonder the place where everyone goes i wonder if sandbox is gary's mod too or whatever but that's that's I don't for another think time so I, I i don't know i don't know anything no, about because... it i just know that it's a, a it is a real space where you can buy and sell land for a lot of money now, Glenn, oh, yeah. tell us your conspiracy theories you've been researching over the week. I've scoured the internet, and I've yeah. found four of the most exciting and intriguing conspiracy theories known to man. Some opinion. of these are mental, <laughs> and some of these are genuinely thought-provoking, and I want to hear how you'd score each theory on its believability out of ten. Yeah. Now, there's a twist. As Ooh. with the uh, first time you we did this, one, up. one of these theories is made up. And it's up to yeah. you, Joseph. And also, play along at home. Which one did I make up? It will be revealed at the end. Okay, okay. <laughs> he's trying to think of it already, like, oh. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can get a high score compared to last time, where I think the best one I got was something like a two out of ten on your believe it be... Because I don't believe meter. these things. Like... You don't believe anything. You're a no, very cynical that's... man, aren't you, Joe? I am a very cynical man. I'm a very sceptical man, is actually skeptical the is best the way, way to yes. put it. I'm very sceptical. Unless somebody says, here's proof and here's a peer-reviewed study, I'm going to be like, oh, I don't know. But go on. Okay, well, here's proof and here's a peer-reviewed study that Nazi zombies are real. Okay. The Nazi party actually began as an occult fraternity before it morphs into a political party. During the war, they would invest heavily into anything they could use to get ahead of their opposition. They had teams of researchers hunt hunting for supernatural treasures, religious relics, including the Holy Grail, and entrances to other worlds on direct orders from Hitler himself. Psychics and astrologers were employed to attack the enemy and plan tactics based on the alignment of the stars. They searched God. for the entrance to the magical land of Thule, where they hoped to recover supernatural powers of flight, telepathy, and telekinesis that they believed their ancestors once possessed. They even searched Tibet for the Yeti. More on him later. <laughs> Huge sums of money were invested into this research, along with hundreds of workers and scientists. They also tried to create super soldiers using steroids and drug cocktails. The DIX pill proper launched March 16th, 1944. It was a pill developed and supplied to Nazi soldiers, which included cocaine, a stimulant called pervitine, and eucodal, a morphine-based painkiller. These left soldiers addicted, but succeeded in extending attention spans, reducing the need for sleep and food, and given a dramatic increase in stamina. DIX was tested in the field and was considered very successful and a plan was put in place to supply pills <clears throat> to the whole Nazi army. But their defeat months later prevented this. Or did it? It did. <laughs> but, <Same. laughs> but on, 20, on 28th of April uh, 1945, American of officers uncovered several secret vaults behind disguised painted walls at a German munitions factory depot which were five feet thick 
one of which housed four monumental coffins containing the skeletons of the 17th century Perugian king, um, Frederick the Great, Field Marshal von Hindenburg and his wife. The Nazis had seized human relics of deceased Teutonic warlords. The fourth coffin was empty, but bore an engraved plate with the name of its intended occupant, Adolf Hitler. Mm. A theory suggests that his corpse... Oh, sorry, that the corpses were meant to be concealed until some future movement when their reappearance could be timed by resurgent Nazis to fire another German generation to rise and conquer again. The Nazis hoped to resurrect... (laughs) <laughs> resurrect I don't know how the hell I said that um, the Nazis hoped to resurrect their fallen warlords to become Nazi zombies the Institute for Military Scientific Research Interrogation at Nuremberg ran a particularly horrific program of medical testing on concentration camp inmates experiments were undertaken to kill or almost kill humans through freezing and then find a way to bring them back so there you have it that was all the plan all along. Nazi zombies, very real. Adolf Hitler, maybe he was one. What do you reckon? Well, it's weird that you say Nazi zombies may be real, but in your own conspiracy story, which may or may not be true or not, or whatever, right? You said it didn't succeed. So they're not. Because uh, it no, was a one plan. part of it didn't succeed. The bit where. Um... Oh, uh, no, no, I said. Oh, the, the bit where I said, or oh, did it? I just threw that in for fun, basically. No, no, yeah, but um, no, what I'm trying mm. to say is like, your whole story is basically saying <clears throat> that it might be something for the future and Germans to like go and resurrect people and stuff like that, right? So it's not happened. Well, they ran the experiments, so it clearly worked. It's just they didn't use it as a tactic. So, you know, yeah. when you're playing Call of Duty and you accidentally yeah. go into one of these bases and there's these zombies just come out of nowhere. That's because okay. they're these experiments and they've all come out the ground to, you know, reclaim I, I mean, Germany. Me, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm so confused because what it felt like you were saying was <clears throat> that there was a pill they developed back then that had cocaine, morphine and a painkiller in it, yeah. right? And they were giving these to these soldiers. I believe that because back then they were given, I think on like nearly all sides, they were giving soldiers cocaine and stuff because it was like, bruh, we need you guys like aware and like mental do you know what i mean <clears throat> like and back then they obviously weren't as bothered about health and the risks and stuff of i mean pre- i'm pretty sure most people did cocaine I've, i'm sure winston churchill did cocaine too it was like a normal thing um you said that bit believable right you said the bit about them thinking about freezing people like getting people to near death and then freezing them right yeah that's a real thing today um, do you know when you die, you can pay to have your body cryogenically stored and they will revive you in the future when they have a method of bringing people back to life? So that's a real thing. Now, whether it was <laughs> but around. But they could, is what they're they saying. They could. Or they, they'd take them too close to death and then bring them back. So they were looking into it, but it wasn't that exact technology that we necessarily are hoping will exist. So you're saying back in 1940s or whatever hell right that they were putting people who were near death into some sort of machine and then bringing them back to life but they're already yeah. they're not dead though yeah it's a, it says experiments were undertaken to kill or almost kill humans through freezing and then find a way to bring them back yeah but it, it just shows have... that they it, as part <laughs> of their as part of their um you know tactics were to create soldiers that could come back to life i mean i i I sort Interesting of, though, isn't it? Don't you think? Yeah, I, I sort of believe that, but none of that says that it existed. It just says that like the experiments were around. It didn't say, oh, they succeeded and there Bro, was zombies. It's a conspiracy theory. About. It's a conspiracy theory, mate. What do you want me to say? <laughs> yeah, but the I mean, if it was fact, it would be history, wouldn't it? Yeah, but the conspiracy theory seems relatively normal. But then you're adding a bit onto it normal. and saying that normal. Bro, the Nazis were wild. Know. I, I, oh, yeah. If they were test like, bruh, listen, the Nazis did some horrible things, right? Not a controversial statement, I guess. <laughs> you know, um, they did some horrible most, things. Most people probably agree with that one. And yeah. uh, these days, <laughs> I don't know, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, they did some awful things, and you're telling me like it's not believable that they were like 
bringing their soldiers to near death to see if they can bring them back to life and giving them pills of cocaine. I believe all of that. They were crazy and they were pretty yeah. darn bad. Do you know what I mean? They were pretty darn oh. uh, evil. And um, I believe all of that. The part I don't wouldn't believe is that they succeeded because they, they might didn't. have done. They might have nah, done. they didn't because they if lost we just the don't war. Know? Yeah, but they might have lost the war. But but like, had they say they'd won and continued to get funding for these experiments, maybe they would have made more Nazi zombies that lasted longer. Or maybe they have made them and they're all lying dormant somewhere under the ground behind another behind another like five foot wall. Because yeah, this is this, this this is the bit that I thought was pretty incredible that they had a. Um, a, basically a tomb built for Adolf Hitler as its intended occupant meaning that they were going to that, that they were literally planning to bring him back that that is like kind of fascinating don't you think it obviously with all things if it's true that is fascinating of course it is and it seems believable all of this stuff seems believable except for you know that they succeeded in any way oh so I, I get more than a 2 out of 10 on this one do I <laughs> yeah but when you add the bit about yes. there are Nazi zombies <laughs> when there are Nazi zombies roaming about I'd knock it right back down to a 1 nah they're not roaming back. about mate they're waiting to research they're waiting probably. nah that goes that goes right back down and also <laughs> oh, you bro. said last time bro. you didn't bro. get any more than a 2 <laughs> but you said that yeah. story about the Titanic not yeah. being the Titanic, and I gave that quite yeah. a high rating because I was like, "Yeah, maybe." Like, oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Fine. Maybe so, I was going. Um, maybe I, maybe I was thinking of like my average score from you. <laughs> it's like zero point so, two. <laughs> I I think that. Um, but then again, I could come out of this saying I think that's believable, apart from the bit that you had in about that they're actually lying dormant waiting. I think and then that's the bit that's true and none of the rest of it is <laughs> no I was going to say and then what will happen is you'll say that was the lie that was the one I made up and I'll be like oh uh, we'll never know well we will um, at the end but we won't for a with, while without the, without the Nazi zombie stuff so I give it a, a 5 or 6 people were a bit crazy back then um, okay. with, the, with the Nazi zombie stuff I give it like a 1 That that's they're not lying dormant in Germany somewhere waiting to and Germans Germans these days are very sensible they are really sensible people. They're not going to let that happen. So you don't think they made one zombie? No. They don't think they brought one person back from the dead who's like an no. enhanced no. soldier who could just mm -mm. eat people or whatever? You it's, don't think they it, did that once? Eat people? Like, it's, it's been nearly 100 zombie, years. It? It's been 80-something years. No, 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 but back since... then, do you think that one of their experiments was successful and that they brought a super soldier back from the dead and he was like a, a no. zombie? No. Don't think they did that. No. It's interesting. Oh, is that interesting? Is it? That I don't believe that's, that's that Germans yeah. brought someone back to life as some sort of cannibal super soldier. It's yeah. interesting. <laughs> Mate, have you not seen any movies? Anyway, <laughs> it's time for. Did you not watch Captain America? Theory. Go on. Yeah, bro. Captain America. True story. Anyway, um, you ready for the second one? Yeah. Go on. Okay. The Yeti. Guess what? Exists. It's real. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so the Yeti is an ape-like creature which inhabits the Himalayan mountain range in Asia. It is often described as being a large, bipedal, ape-like creature that is covered with brown, grey or white hair and is sometimes depicted as having large, sharp teeth. You might know the Yeti, you might know the Yeti by its western name, the Abominable Snowman. Evidence of, the, evidence of the Yeti's existence includes supposed visual sightings, visio, video recordings, photographs and casts of large footprints oh my god what get it together man did my voice break did my voice break i think it did anyway bro i can't speak to that i don't know why hey. <clears throat> clear my throat <laughs> the yeti was part of the pre-buddhist beliefs of himalayan people who worshipped a glacier being as a god of the hunt the being was dis depicted as an ape-like creature who carries a large stone as a weapon and makes a whistling swoosh sound as published in 1832, Trekker B.H. Hodgson's team spotted a tall bipedal creature covered with long dark hair in northern Nepal, which seemed to flee in fear. An early record of reported footprints appeared in 1899 in Lawrence Waddle's Among the Himalayas uh, book. <laughs> Waddle reported his guide's description of a large ape-like creature that left the prints, though Waddle thought they were made by a bear. The frequency of reports increased during the early 20th century, 
when Westerners began making determined attempts to scale the many mountains in the area and occasionally reported seeing odd creatures or strange tracks. In 1925, Royal Geo Geographical Society member and photographer N.A. Tombazi saw a creature at about 15,000 feet near Zimu Glacier. He observed the creature for about a minute from about 200 meters and says, unquestionably the figure in outline was exactly like a human being walking upright and stopping occasionally to pull, to pull at some dwarf rhododendron bushes. It showed, up against, it showed up dark against the snow and as far as I could make out, <clears throat> wore no clothes. He said the creature's prints were similar in shape to those of a man, but only six to seven inches long by four inches wide. While attempting to scale Mount Everest in 1951, Eric Shipton took photographs of a number of large prints in the snow at about 20,000 feet above sea level. Um, Slawomir Wawrix, I don't know how the hell to say his name, <laughs> um, claimed in his book The Long Walk, published in 1956, that as he and some others were crossing the Himalayas in the winter of 1940, their path was blocked for two hours by two for hours, sorry, by two bipedal animals that were doing seemingly nothing but shuffling around in the snow. As you can see, there is a lot of evidence behind this, right? Yeah. Um, it goes on in 2007. As you can see, we're kind of working up to current day, but this is stuff like just throughout the, the years that is like documented stuff. Uh, witness, you know, eyewitnesses basically. Um, in 2007, Joshua Gates and his team, Destination Truth, found a series of footprints in the Everest region of Nepal resembling descriptions of the Yeti. Uh, casts were made of these prints. Later in 2009, Gates presented hair samples with a forensic analyst, concluding that the hair contained an unknown DNA sequence. And at a 2011 conference in Russia, Participating scientists and enthusiasts declared having 95% evidence of the Yeti's existence. That's all we know about that, but that is apparently a thing that happened. <laughs> um, the United States government also thought that finding the Yeti was, a li was likely enough to create three rules for American expeditions searching for it. Um, these rules were obtain a ne Nepalese permit, uh, do not harm the Yeti except in self-defense, and let the Nepalese government approve any news reporting on the animal's discovery. So, basically, it's real, loads of people have seen it, and it also, it's real. So, what do you have to say about that? I, I quite like how you sound like a kid when you finish your story and you go, it's real. So firstly, <laughs> it's real. Um, so, what I believe, what I know is that Every year, there's like new species of things discovered. Do you know what I mean? There's new things that are, it's like, oh look, we got a new spider. Oh look, there's a new bird. And yeah. sometimes oh, it's look, like, new oh, new yeti. Sometimes sort of it's something like, yeah. oh, we thought this thing was extinct. Like there was a fish um, back in the day that they found <laughs> that they thought was extinct. Like, yeah. bro, it was. It's been around on this planet for like six hundred million years. And they found it and went, yeah, it's still around. And it was like, oh, yeah. bloody, like, we don't know enough about this planet. Do you know what I mean? Because even though there are so many big cities and we're all over the place and traveling with planes and stuff, there's so much, like, uncharted territory. And um, I think that it's a possibility because there was at some point, you know, we evolved from monkeys. And then at some point there was that weird like sort of missing link type of stage where there were different species. It's not species. missing. I, I found it, mate. No, it's right here. It's I'm, right not here. About, I'm not talking about the Yeti. I'm saying uh, there was there was a st there were stages where there were different species of us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And we were different in certain ways, little ways. So yeah. the idea that there's an ape-like creature out there that's closer to us than monkeys are, like walking on you know, like bipedal, you know, walking like that and just chilling. Um, the one thing I will say, though, is it's sort of like Bigfoot in that it started back then, you know, like ages ago. I don't think the people in, like, you know, the National Geographical Survey Team or whatever back in the 40s were faking that stuff. But I think now, because it's become, like, a bit of a, like, legend people are just going around being like well you know what yeah i saw this and i saw this and it gets on my nerves a little bit because i'd really love if someone like got you know like a good picture of it 
or like proper yeah. like this is a hundred percent real look at this evidence and it was like wow look at that we've and it came out in like bbc news or something like the yeti has been discovered it is official but people just go around and be like oh yeah, yeah yeah i was doing this and then i saw it and it's like bro get your phone out we've well, got you've some... got to bear in mind go as well you got to bear in mind as well like you, you mentioned earlier we have you know we're always discovering new types of fish and that deep mm-hmm. down in the undiscovered parts of the ocean you know fine it's fair enough that we wouldn't have discovered those before. <clears throat> um, same same goes for because this is up like in the Himalayas, right, or mm. in Nepal, and like in very dangerous like icy territory that maybe only a creature with a massive thick coat on with human like intelligence could even survive up there, you know. Um, and so it's not that unbelievable that if you had a team of explorers see this thing, first of all you'd be scared as hell because you think yeah, you're totally course. alone up there, and second of all. You say, oh yeah, just whip your phone out. Yeah, that's all right, but they're probably hanging on the like the edge of a cliff or something. You know, they're trying to climb a mountain in like probably blizzard, um, like very dangerous conditions, yeah, guess... right? And they've not just necessarily yeah. got their smartphone on them, or that's not maybe the first thing they would think of doing when they're potentially about to be chased off the mountain by like a massive ape-like thing. Yeah, and um, yeah, yeah and probably when you go back, it probably is gone because. You know, especially if it if it is a thing, something with human like intelligence, like you know the the myths say it is. Um, yeah, intriguing, right. isn't it? I I guess it doesn't apply as much to the yeti. It's more towards like the bigfoot and stuff like that because, pardon me, it's just that you hear. That's basically a lot of the stories. Western version of it, isn't it? Yeah, I believe you, you hear a lot of stories about things like this, right? But yeah. it's to the extent that say now you've got like a thousand stories out there and you think one person just one could have whipped their phone out and i know like oh it's scary right you might panic you might freak out but bro you've seen people take pictures of like lions and stuff while they're like about to attack or like gorillas when they're like straight up like right next to you and they're scary beasts and they're real but the climate is fine but like they're not in danger of their surroundings as well like if you're up a mountain you probably no, got like yeah, all your coat you, and equipment you miss, and stuff you, on, you know? You misunderstood. I said, yeah, for the Yeti, that's fair yeah. enough. I was talking about more like, you know, like Bigfoot and... Okay. Like, do you know when people are like talking in the about forest that? And that. Yeah, what I'm sure. trying to say is, do you know when people discuss mythological creatures and stuff these days? It's like technology is so advanced that your phone has a camera that is 900 million times better than like the cameras back in like the 50s or whatever and you yeah. could just go boom and snap it like you could snapchat it bro and be like yo, I just, saw the, the I just saw the <laughs> yeti uh, but no but mo- it's more about bigfoot like the point you made about yeah. the yeti is fair enough the himalayas are a scary dangerous region you know you might not also maybe people are more inclined to see shapes and stuff when they're like dehydrated and exhausted from climbing a mountain maybe or in the the snow when there's blizzards everywhere swirling about and you see shapes and that um and obviously the footprints and the dna samples some of this i will say again with all of these conspiracy theories i've written them in the most convincing way i can so i've i I may have omitted some evidence that proves some of these wrong but there there were some that have no contrary evidence some of them are just like straight up sightings that are unexplained but i will also say with your smartphone point some of the there's only two two sightings on a one sighting that's newer than 1956 here so you know it's not like they're seeing these all the time in present day like yeah there was one in yeah, 2007, they found footprints. And then after that, so far, like, there's no notable sightings that I could find. Um, maybe there's a couple more that like just weren't on the bits of the internet I was on. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure fair. there's quite a lot more, if I'm honest. But I, I just went basically found like the most notable sightings that I could include here. And um, yeah, the fact that there's only one beyond like the 1950s shows that like, yeah, maybe they couldn't just whip their smartphone out at the time. Yeah, yeah. So, so what am I getting? Be- what am I getting? Give me the, give me the big believ- be- believability points. Oh, Come on, that's so got to be a high diff- one. That's got to be a high it's, one. It's so difficult with these ratings because of the fact that, like, you know, there are lots of bits of that, like, what you told me that I do believe, but there are some yeah. bits that I don't. Do you know what I mean? There are some bits that I'm like, well, that didn't happen. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know that Destination Truth people? Like, 
or whatever yeah. you call them. Yeah, they seem to be one of these like conspiracy theorist type group, and maybe they just like put footprints down, like like they did something in the snow, and were like, look at these footprints, and the DNA hair sample. It might have been like one of those technicalities where it's like, oh, it's unknown because what happened is a piece of your hair fell off into the snow and then someone spat <laughs> yeah. on it or something or stomped on it. <laughs> so we 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 can't, like, it's unknown. Like, 95% of it's unknown. Yeah. But the 5% is you. <laughs> the 5% is you. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it a 8 for the overall uh, oh, right. myth of the Yeti. High school, ding, ding, ding. I, I, I think it's a sort of believable <laughs> thing that there could be some sort of ape-like creature living out somewhere. But I think if not... there was, if there was a creature there, it would be hard to find. Let's because put it that way. There was, there was that time. Just real quick, there was that time yeah. where they found a group of, it might have been chimpanzees. I'm not sure, and they found a group of them deep in a forest that were slightly different than normal chimpanzees and they were bigger stronger yeah. and they ate cheetahs i think they ate leopards and stuff sometimes it and it was like scary it was like yo and that was sort of recent and they were like yeah these things are real and that yeah. was a discovery and so you know how's bigfoot or the yeti like, you know, if back then you said, yo, there's a group of monkeys out in the jungle that eat leopards and cheetahs and stuff, yeah. you'd be like, bruh, what? Get out of here. And then they discovered Get it, here. and they were like, it's yeah. real. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Um, I will say, uh, just on what you were saying about like hoaxes and stuff, there were a couple of hoaxes I didn't mention here because it didn't really add to it, but like yeah. um, a couple that have happened. I, I remember reading one about, um, there was one with fake prints where it was deliberately fake prints, and there was also one where someone said they had the scalp of the yeti and um it turned out to be like a part of a different animal it was like their from like their leg or something of a different animal like um a buffalo or something i, I don't know like oh some sort of animal like that and uh, someone said it was the scalp of a yeti because at first they couldn't they couldn't trace the hair back and then it ended up being from like some very oh. ordinary animal um but for a while that was considered like evidence of the yeti existing but yeah, interesting that one, though, isn't it? I'd yeah. love imagine. I'd love to like see the Yeti. Like, yeah, of oh, course. Bro. But the bro. only thing I don't, I think so I sick. don't believe about the whole thing is that it's got human-like intelligence, because I think that's like. Bro. You were saying humans have evolved from whatnot, and uh, maybe there's other yeah, but saying things human, that have evolved from whatnot. I don't know. Human-like, <laughs> it depends on what scale, because of the fact that like there we are chimpanzees, there are chimpanzees and stuff we out asked there. One, have we? There, there are chimpanzees and stuff out there that can communicate, like, they can learn language, you know, sign language and stuff to a certain yeah. extent but it's still nowhere near how developed and, like, crazy our intelligence is at the moment, and even the stupidest people out there it's like, bro, the you know, levels, and I think if yetis were that clever, and there were a bunch of them we would have formed like there would have been some sort of society or something. Well, maybe they don't I mean? want to be found, and they're clever enough to hide. I don't know about that. Like, well, you know, in the past there were like I don't know if it was the Neanderthals or some ancient version of humans, which are definitely real that were yeah. bigger. You know, and maybe are real. Yeah. if we evolved from like one version of old humans, then the Neanderthals say I think it's them that are the big ones evolved well, into say a yeti that ended up being less and less and less of them and they went up to live in the mountains and now they just don't want to be found maybe who knows? but the thing is neanderthals weren't human-like intelligence do you know what i mean like if were you're talking no no because i thought they basically were humans they like... basically they basically were but the levels of our intelligence now compared to when we were in neanderthals and there were different species about there was neanderthals and other ones and i think yeah where the result of them mixing and mixing and mixing until and i don't know i think they were short but maybe neanderthals were a bit bigger but some of I them think, were short weren't they? i, I think know. a lot of them were midgets compared to us today yeah big disclaimer neither me or joe are experts on any of this we just yeah, find it yeah. fun to react to these theories because it's like i don't know worlds are big um Scary it's a mental place. place isn't it you know big yeah. scary place and there's lots of things we don't understand and it's fun to um you know especially fun to go in on like the deep dive some of these theories that people have that attempt to explain some of the more mental stuff speaking of which this one's a bit 
this one's a bit of a scary one. So, this is number three. We are living in a black hole. Okay. Okay. So, according to the Doomsday Prophecy, the ancient Maya uh, predicted the end of the world would occur on December the 21st, 2012. Although they weren't specific about how Armageddon was to come about, most theories suggested that some kind of su suggested some kind of massive astronomical event. Now, the Higgs boson is the particle Stephen Hawking predicted could destroy the universe, or in his own words, could cause the universe to undergo a catastrophic vacuum decay. Well, CERN discovered the Higgs boson in 2012, and this theory suggests that they inadvertently created a black hole and Earth was sucked into it. Due to this, the world did end in 2012, as prophesied by the ancient Mayans, but perhaps due to the way time and space are distorted in a black hole, we haven't realised it yet. Some physicists actually believe it's possible that CERN accidentally created a black hole that sucked us in without us even noticing and we've just been living in it. Um, some say nothing has felt right, felt right since 2012 and it seems like the world descends more and more into chaos each day and time feels like it is passing faster. This chaos will escalate and escalate until the word completely crashes in on itself. What do you make of all that? Um, I remember back then, we were in secondary school, you know, and I remember being, like, scared a little bit, being like, yo, they're going to smash atoms together. You know what yeah. I mean? That's crazy. And they've said, oh, we're trying to um, figure out how the universe was created, right? They were trying to answer questions as to how we all came about. And everyone was yeah. like, you could create a mini black hole and end the world and all of this stuff. Um I think but the did whole... they? Uh, I don't know. Would we know? Would we know? Because of the way time and space is distorted, as we can see in black holes, if we were in one and we were in this kind of per perpetual state of like being sucked into the black hole, would we even notice, you know? No, I feel Mad, like we it? would because there are certain things like, one, that, what, the sun just got sucked in at the exact same time as us too and in the exact right position as well. Probably has... everything immediately got sucked in, but we are still seeing 2012. So for us, the sun's still in the sky, the moon's still where it's supposed to be, everything yeah, that... looks how it's meant to look, but the cause, that's only because time is basically being distorted because we're already in the black hole. They've they've launched satellites, like they launched that James Webb mate, they can do satellite, what they want. I think. They, they made Spider-Man their way home, mate. I don't know. No, but they've, they've launched days. satellites that have gone really, really far out into space and captured pictures of, you know, different stars and planets and stuff like that, that we know are out there. And that's proof enough, I think, that we're not. Because while I will agree that for some reason after 2012, everything's just gone mental. Like it seems like 2012 just... After that, or actually, if I'm being more accurate, 2016, I think it was after 2016, everything just started going crazy. Do you know what I mean? It was like, you know, and now look at the state of the world at the moment. Where like, when, you, when you look at how things are escalating, it does seem, you know, maybe chaos. Maybe, no, I, th I think I think it's a direct result. <laughs> I think it's a direct result of um, us and the climate. Not, not to try and like make a, a climate point, but it is a direct result of us messing about with the climate. Just did, mate. <laughs> and just admit what? That it's, no, I, just, uh... I said you just did, mate. <laughs> oh, you just did. I thought you said just admit that it's a black hole. No, um, um, like yeah, it's, it's well. us taking the mickey with the climate, do you know what I mean? And it's been happening for years and years now. And people have said, yeah, you know, the water's going to be rising and stuff like that. And the weather is getting a bit mental and COVID's now a thing. Do you know what I mean? And I think it's just a direct result of how we're treating the planet to a certain extent. And the chaos is from that more than anything. And, you know, yeah, 2012 was a bit coincidental that... It, to be fair, CERN shouldn't have done that. They should have waited another year because the fact that they did it in 2012 and everyone was like, oh, the Mayan calendar... That's good for it, isn't it? But... <laughs> The other thing is, didn't they come out and say, oh, the 2012 prediction was wrong, it was 2021, we read the letters the wrong way around, or something like that. Um, I, like, I have oh. heard that, but also that doesn't change the day when CERN did, did create that. this particle, yeah. so yeah, I guess it, it wouldn't would, matter. It would destroy the link between, you know, oh, the Mayans said this, and CERN did that, and then it happened. It Maybe would destroy we're wrong that about link. that. 
But um, I know Mayans, isn't it? Who knows what they're on about? Yeah, but that's the thing. The Mayans, like, it's a bit. Mayans are chatting shit. <laughs> yeah, the Mayans are chatting. You know, and they're still about certain like. Um, are they? Not not the Mayans, but descendants of the Mayans are still about, and some of them still yeah. worship like um, Kukul Khan and stuff like that. So they're still like, you know, about, and I don't think any of them have come out and said, "Yeah, it's, it's happened." They've just been knocking about doing. Their oh, own what do thing. they know? They're the descendants, aren't they? They they don't know any more than <laughs> What do they know? <laughs> well, what did the ancient ones know? You know, what did anybody know? You well, know? they all, like, they, they, I believe their calendar was based on astrology. Like, the people looked up to the stars a lot back in like ancient times, right? And so, a lot of the predictions and that they made were accurate because what they did, they studied really heavily, studied what the stars were doing and they could see patterns and stuff. So, they could pretty much predict like meteor strikes and stuff because they could see when the meteor belt would come around and when we were passing through it and that kind of thing. So, they knew when to predict like a doomsday. Like, I'm pretty okay. sure that is exactly what the Mayan calendar does refer to when it says about like a big doomsday is that that's actually the date when we're meant to pass back through a um, like a meteor stream or something. And as it happened, none hit us. But that was apparently what that was about. Um, I shouldn't be saying that because it kind of takes away from my conspiracy theory. Brilliant. But basically, we're well all done. in a black hole. We don't know anything about it. But at some point, everything's just going to go black and we won't know why because it's just going to escalate and escalate. And we can't tell because time is too distorted for us. And even if, as you say, we launch a, sp a satellite all the way into outer space, it doesn't matter because of the way we perceive time. Yes, it does. Still, it still works, mate. No, it, it that oh, that no. doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, also, uh, real quick, all I know is, yeah. um, if we went back in time and gave one of these Mayans a Fanta, they they'd be really ill. So that's point one to us. What? Zero to <laughs> the they? Mayans. If we went back in time and gave them some sort of fizzy drink, yeah, they they'd just be like, "What is? What have you done to me?" So point one to us: the Mayans don't know anything. I'm calling them out. Well, not the no, not the modern day Mayans, because that's that's sort of racist, I guess. But those Mayans that said that the world <laughs> would end in 2012, I'm calling you out. You couldn't drink a Fanta, mate. So what are you? Jeez, we're gonna get cancelled by the Mayans now. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen the movie Interstellar? Yeah. No, Cause... no, I haven't. But I've watched, oh, uh, I've watched no. clips of it, and it talks all about how, which is true, that when we travel through space close to the speed of light, time moves differently because of the equation what uh, distances speed divided by time or whatever it is. You know that that yeah. equation. Yeah, so it's a big move... theme of the movie, um, relative time. I think, uh, and yeah. like. Uh, I won't spoil the twist ending because it's a pretty insane twist, but basically it revolves around they enter a black hole and everything from there is like the most bizarre whack stuff ever. But it kind of, if you've seen that movie and the end of it, you'll get where I'm coming from with this theory yeah, and well, clearly whatever. It, you know, you can see the inspiration either behind the theory or behind the movie um, because it's a very like similar similar but idea at least the thing the thing is though it's true and it's something that people can't really wrap their heads around it's a difficult concept to understand but you know um people traveling in the space station above earth and that moves a lot quicker than we do down here right, right. that moves very quick they've got different clocks to us because they move through time at a different yeah. speed because of how quick they're going now if you multiply that effect by loads and i remember learning about this and being like that's mad it's essentially tra time travel but not back do you know what i mean only forward and I was yeah. like, that that's insane you know because time you, is you've relative. seen you've seen clips from like i would say you it sounds like you've seen clips from like the first half of the film no i it i didn't get that from the film that was from my okay. early days of engineering and it was just oh, a concept right, right, okay. that i was fascinated yeah. by and was like that's insane and yeah. I believe I all that the, stuff is true. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is true. It's it's yeah. scientific. But th then obviously the film was out, and I was like, "Yo, wow!" It covers the concept, but I never watched it. Yeah, it um, takes that concept and arguably turns it into not a fantasy, but like it, it pushes the limit. It pushes yeah. the limit of that concept as to what it could mean. And um, yeah. Anyway, back to this. What do you rate the uh, conspiracy theory? Out of ten, uh, believability. A a two. 
The only bit two? that's like, what? yeah, oh, two. this this one's like. Then you realise we're in a black hole. This because not understand. <laughs> there's there's a lot of things that basically state that we're not, and we're fine. Right. Uh, the world so, is a so, chaotic. So you think? The world is a chaotic, scary place at the moment, but a lot of it is to do with our own, like it's to do with the advancement of technology and our own treatment of the climate. That that's pretty much it, and things are going a bit mental but that's nothing to do with like the passing of time and stuff like that mm. i'm pretty sure that's, that's something that i'm pretty sure that's a theory that i've heard before from like the joe rogan podcast or i've heard somebody wheel that out before and i've been like what are you on about and they're like oh because because time is distorted and this and it's like yeah but try and explain it in an actual scientific way and you start to realize that it doesn't make as much sense you know so, so is that a five out of ten? That's a two. All right. Uh, anyway, You've lost, me. You've lost <laughs> um, me again. My last one. My last one is uh, another space-related one. Okay. So, did you know, Joe? Mm-hmm. Alien spacecraft are currently orbiting Earth. Okay. So there is a. You th- 13, you've gotten 000... this. Sorry, mm-hmm. you've gotten this from Chicken Little, haven't you? Have I? I've, yeah, I've never seen that. Chicken and, <laughs> I've yeah. never seen that in my life. <laughs> um, am I missing out? Was it good? It, I mean, if you go back and watch it now, you're probably going to be like, "What it was this fever dream of a film?" But yeah, that was kid, one I never. Saw. Oh, it's a film. I thought it was like a series, bro. I, I don't know. I remember people being obsessed with it. Anyway, um, alien spacecraft are orbiting Earth. Right. There is a thirteen thousand year old artificially made satellite known as the Black Knight, which many believe uh, is an ancient alien spaceship. I've heard what? this one. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm sure our audience haven't, so if, if you don't mind if yeah, I just no, continue no, no. Hey, hey, hey. Right. You know what? Be my <laughs> guest. Go right ahead. <laughs> just letting what, you know. What do you want me to do? Just like finish the episode and be like, no, oh, I've heard no, this one. Nah, just, forget it, lad. It was just, it was just a uh, rem- like, I went, ah, and you went, what? Have you heard this one? So I was just answering yeah. the question. Oh, you can right. carry on, though, yeah. of course. All right. No flip from you, mate. Anyway. Uh, mm. So. Many believe it's an ancient alien spaceship, which apparently broadcasts radio signals with an unusual delay. Aliens are within our orbit, watching us and reporting back to their colonies. Nash- NASA, <laughs> NASA, <laughs> NASA um, <laughs> captured an image of the mysterious black object orbiting the Earth in 1998 during the first space shuttle mission to the International Space Station. This is a very eerie looking image, which I'm sure I'll use as the thumbnail for this clip, but if you're listening, you can easily Google this. It is a black shape with odd angles floating in space. Nikola Tesla said he had received radio signals from space during his uh, 1899 radio experiments in Colorado Springs. He believed aliens were communicating through numbers, which are a universal language. He said, the changes I noticed, uh, I noted were taking place periodically and with such a clear suggestion of number and order that they were not traceable to any any cause then known to me. The feeling is constantly growing on me that I had been the first to hear the greeting of one planet to another. The theory that aliens were communicating with Earth through radio pulses propagated even further in 1927 when civil engineer and ham radio operator Jorgen Hals, I believe is how you say that, uh, stumbled upon an unusual quality to his radio signals as he transmitted from his home in Oslo. The signals would unexpectedly return to him moments later. Hals perceived this as an alien phenomenon. Now, author Duncan Lunan posited that a 13,000 year old object orbiting the moon could have led to the long delayed echoes, leading Black Knight truthers to cite this as the first sign of their satellite which sent the radio pulses. Are we being watched by an ancient alien species? Joe. So I know this isn't <laughs> I know this isn't your one because of the fact that I've I've seen that and I've seen the pictures and they are quite ominous and quite a bit like, whoa, what is that? Yeah. Right? And I don't know whether like NASA have officially come out and said like, yeah, that's a real thing, that's a real photo, there's this happening in space. But yeah, I, I think they I said find... it was real, a real alien. I think oh, that's yeah, said. yeah, yeah. They definitely went out and said, yeah, it was aliens, mate. You chill. Yeah. Um, but I find it a fascinating concept. You know that I keep talking about this telescope that they've launched 
so far into deep space it is like ridiculously far out i wonder yeah. if there's a civilization out there that hasn't reached the point of space travel yet and they're like yo what is that and they can't communicate back mm. but they're like yo someone's monitoring us that's scary and it's the same thing as this uh black knight thing you know what i mean um i think that uh the whole picture is true <clears throat> so the, the picture thing's a 10 out of 10 oh the um, picture's like guaranteed real yeah, it's pretty, a guaranteed, it was a nasa a it was a nasa thing. picture yeah, i think yeah it's a real thing and it's a bit like scary but you said some other stuff that I just sort of went... It went right over my head, but... <laughs> so yeah, the gist yeah. of it is, like, it's a... Uh, so aliens have put this spaceship called the Black Knight in our orbit, so blending in with all the other bits of space debris and whatever, because bear in mind there's loads of space debris like this in our orbit all the time, so we probably wouldn't spot something like that except for this one-off, like, picture that we got of it um, because of how much and how far apart it all is, right? So... Um, the, the idea is that it's in our orbit just just constantly watching us from a distance at which we're not meant to be able to even know it's there and it's reporting regular radio signals back to far off into outer space saying like, basically that what part, we're up to I don't think yeah I, I think I think that's the part that you lose me where it's like it's... so you don't be, you don't so Joe you don't believe Nikola Tesla is what you're saying basically I mean, Nikola Tesla was a madman. He was a genius, but he was a crazy person. And that was back in, like, the, what, 1800s? It was, hang on, uh, 1899. Bro, again, I'm going to make the same point about Fanta. You go back and give Nikola Tesla a Fanta, he's going to be like, what? <laughs> I don't to? get your point about Fanta. He'd be fine. What it's, are you talking it's about? Just, it's just a nice <laughs> point to make. He'd right, just be like, what okay. is this craziness? Whoa, what is going on? His mind would be blown. Did they not have the... fizzy drinks back then? Surely they did. Uh... No. <laughs> they had um, alcohol, right? So no, no. Um, fizzy drinks. The, Nat the Nazis hard, invented Fanta, Fanta, bro. Did they? So all oh, right. Yeah. Maybe um, it turned him into a Nazi zombie. <laughs> <laughs> God. Well, all I all I think is that I believe he is there. I don't know what it is. <laughs> he exists. Okay. Oh, oh, the spaceship's there. I thought you meant you to believe not... Nikola Tesla is there. <laughs> <laughs> I right, believe okay. Nikola Tesla exists. I just don't. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I believe it's there, that but I don't know anything about it. So anything other than that is just theories. Do you know what I mean? So mate, the whole thing's a theory. I will clarify. This is a conspiracy theory. But based on that information, how believable do you think it is? On a scale Not of that to believable. 10? Not that believable. It's like it's like a okay. four. I don't think that an alien race would be monitoring us for thirteen thousand years or whatever they said. It's there's a potential that it was from alien of origin and they've just launched something out and it's just gotten lost and it's there yeah. but for it to still be broadcasting back and saying look what they're doing bro i don't know about that i don't know uh, we've 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 heard the radio signals matt i don't know what to tell you but yeah uh that is all the conspiracy theories so the big question is joe which the one third one did the i make third up one. you made up the third one that is my opinion wasn't the third one no, it was the Nazi zombie one, man. <laughs> Wasn't the Nazi zombie one? Are you joking? It was the Yeti. <laughs> Do you want to know what the real twist is? It was the I last didn't... one we just discussed. Well, I didn't make didn't any, fake of them any of them. <laughs> you. Oh, but God. I still kept everyone. I still kept everyone listening, though, didn't I? <laughs> Yo. Well, you know how long it took me to make one up last time because of the amount of like um, research you have to do to just have one. Like, yeah. to try and make, like, a realistic sound in one. The last time I did it, it took me longer to make that one that I faked than to make all, all the other ones. Yeah, yeah it was such yeah. a pain. So, yeah. You know, I was sure it was a third <laughs> one just because I knew that was a thing that people were thinking about back then. But we've discussed it. I'm pretty sure back in school people talked about it. So it was like... You could easily yeah. just make it up and be like, oh, yeah, the Higgs boson. It had the least, like, evidence as well from... Like, some of the others had, like, actual recorded Dates stuff. Like, for example, the last yeah. one had a photo of the thing. Um, yeah. I've got a bit of information about... Hang on. Some of them. So... I know the first one was pretty... Like, first of all, most of that information is pretty, like, agreed upon. Um, 
there was there was again with all these there is some contrary evidence uh, the yeti i've already said you know there are there is a lot of like hoax stuff and some of it has been disproved even some of the points i say like you know have later been disproved i just thought i'd give you all the initial discoveries just so paint the picture you know and then yeah i don't think we're living in a black hole uh i just don't think we are <laughs> i think maybe we probably just would have died straight away um but again maybe we don't know enough about how black holes work and maybe Maybe that's the most believable one. Who knows? And then this is the best one. With the fourth one, do you want to know what the bit of space junk actually is? Gone. <laughs> it's a towel. A thermal towel. What, the Black Knight is a thermal the towel? Black Knight is a thermal towel, apparently, yeah. So what I said about it being a real picture and then saying it's not... It is a real picture. Yeah, it is a real picture. So, no, it, just, I know. it is a but, towel, apparently. But, me but saying... for a while, people thought it was E. Satellite. But you know me saying like Shit. it's definitely not something broadcasting back to aliens. It's and then you said it's a towel. Yeah, and the radio that. signals apparently it was something to do with like a um, it was like a normal delay that you would get from like a pulsar or something like that. I think is the explanation. Like so, it wasn't a radio signal coming from that, even though it appeared to be coming from something that's in our orbit. It was actually a delay from like a far off pulsar. Something like that is what the actual explanation is. Wow. Again, guys. Feel free to Google this because obviously, you know, I've done a lot of research. It took me a while to research all this, but I may have missed a few details and I'm not a scientist, so I don't even get it. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, hope you enjoyed it though, because it, it was a lot of fun driving myself nuts, like learning about Nazi zombies and stuff. Yeah, yeah. man. Like, I can guarantee there'll be a picture <laughs> of you somewhere with, like, you know, like a load of papers on the wall with pins in it and, yeah. like, links and stuff. And you go, you like, see, we're living in a black hole. You see, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's proven. Or, like, wires around, like, um, pins <laughs> yeah, stringing yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and just to clarify, for anyone that was listening, don't take anything what we're saying as, like, the truth. Go and research stuff yourself from your own sources and you know figure things out for yourself don't just be like well glenn said it on fireside podcast so it must be true well, um, that's definitely what know. our audience think though isn't it you know glenn said it, it, so it must be true <laughs> <laughs> all right Joe, then before yeah. we bring this podcast to a close it is real quick time for our bonus segment called what's on where we briefly talk about things we've watched read games we've played anything you want to talk about in the world of entertainment and i want to go first because I saw the Bidoof Pokemon short. It's the oh, most, so it is the I, cutest bro. thing I've ever seen. Well, yeah. I was like almost in tears by the end of that. You saw, oh, you saw it as well? No yeah, way. Yeah, bro. <laughs> like, it is sick. Like, I don't know why the Pokemon company don't do more things like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that was so, so cool. I was like, dude. And it came out of nowhere, too. It's just like, hey, here's a thing. And I was like, oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I saw the first comment, I think, was. Um, I didn't wake up this morning. When I woke up this morning, I didn't expect to be crying over a Bidoof. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, go and watch it. It's like um, it's on the Pokemon's official YouTube channel. It's yeah. quite new, um, amazing animation. But mm -hmm. yeah, like, like I said, like what did it for me was like I actually like really like sort of was rooting for this Bidoof. Yeah, I felt bad. <laughs> I don't, for I don't even care just... about Bidoof normally. You know, like it yeah. wasn't even like a favorite Pokemon of mine or anything. But that story, it's just so like. I don't know, so good. But you know what I don't like about the story, though? What? It just makes you feel bad when you play Pokemon, because when you play Pokemon, you catch lots of Pokemon and you just put them in the PC and you leave them, right? And then yeah. that story is like, look, look how terrible you are. This <laughs> Pokemon was probably like, oh, man, I'm, I get to spend time with this guy and this guy. Oh, yeah, amazing. But then I thought about it, and I was like, you know, in the anime, Ash catches a uh, Merc, right? And the first yeah. thing he does is ship it off to Professor Oak. He doesn't do it. He just goes, Professor Oak, you can have it. So in my yeah. head, my head canon is that when you put it in the PC, it gets shipped off to the professor. Yeah. And he lives gets in like chill. the farm. There's like a farm by the yeah. map, isn't there, where all the Pokemon mm. roam around in the fields? That's my head um, canon. So I don't but feel bad. For the, for just like so give people a bit of an idea of what this uh, little short's about. Um, essentially, it's. I mean, go and watch it because there's no way I can express like the feel of it in this. Mm. But uh, just to give a quick summary, like. Um, essentially Bidoof is like a Pokemon that is just used for cutting down trees that are blocking and your path in the po in the original Pokemon games yeah, or and even Gen surfing, 4 anyway bro. Even yeah, surfing. it can do all the like HM moves which are like ways to clear your path so you can advance mm. in the story but it's not a good Pokemon for like battling with and mm. uh, the moral of like this story is basically the trainer gets a Bidoof and eventually it becomes 
powerful enough to battle the Pokemon it got saved from at the start. Mm. And um, whereas obviously that wouldn't happen in any playthrough of like the game. No. And um, it's just basically showing like, you know, any Pokemon can shine and all this kind of stuff. And if you believe in yourself, you can overcome the nice, odds in like the best nice way story. possible. Yeah. And Incredible. you know what's nice about that? We're going to go straight from that feel good, like type of, oh yeah, any Pokemon can thrive. We love Pokemon to Arceus which is coming out which is Pokemon just want to kill you Pokemon want to murder you do you know what I mean they're like yeah, bro yeah. I see a trainer right there I'm going to beat him up and it's like ah no <laughs> um, which looks awesome, by, by the way, way looks awesome I haven't looked at any of the new trailers apparently there's a bunch of like new stuff that keeps coming out I'm trying to go in clean I'm trying to go in like without seeing stuff and it's coming up soon so that should be amazing yeah um uh, if you if you haven't seen the Voltorb short, watch that as well. That's quite good. <laughs> it doesn't really give anything away, but like it's uh, it's just another funny little cartoon. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Is that anything else you want to add? Or no, uh, I think that's it. All well, on yeah. in regards to what's on. I guess what's on yeah. with me is trying to get my YouTube channel back um, to a position where you know I can record videos again and stuff like that and one of the things I might start doing I'm going to start the list up again I might try and do a video every two weeks first to ease myself back in or see how I feel or what I might do this week is start learning Premiere Pro again and getting used to the tools I was using and stuff like that and then um, you still paying for it or if you just already got it it's it's not mine it's my okay. girlfriend's because she's oh, an handy. artist and she needs um, to use those tools. What does she do on it? Uh, videos, because video is part of art. Do you know what I mean? Like oh, fine art right, covers right, a right. lot of yeah. different uh, topics. Yeah, but um, I'm I'm gonna try and go every two weeks. I think first off, or I'll just see how I feel. But eventually, when I get um, I've talked about this with work. Do you know when I pass my probation, which is apparently coming up? next month and right. from what i've heard from work bro i might not just pass probation i might be up for a promotion like so quick i've apparently done really well at work according to my well boss done. and well stuff done. uh yeah uh, pat myself on the back but yeah, i might definitely. ask for them to uh change my hours and uh because i get an hour long break i might ask for a half hour break and then change my hours so that i finish at like four or half four so that i've got a enough time to film a video after I'm done with work and then edit it throughout the week and then yeah, I might once I get into the swing of things I might start doing two a week so that I can introduce a different f thing alongside because I want to do the list yeah. again but I also want to do some like new one of the series kind of thing yeah, yeah exactly exactly yeah. so that's my what I reckon what would be cool for you is like if you're going to go just with the gaming or even would you do anything that's not gaming just like a video not at about the moment. Thing or not. not at the moment, but um, I mean, I could end up doing some sort of rant type style video where I just <laughs> rant about something. Yeah, you do that on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, make it like more editorialized, so there's like funny yeah, yeah. pictures and you know, it's a bit mental rather than a podcast style format. But you know, I'll just see where it takes me. At the moment, my main plans are to get comfortable with work life, which I am start getting back into the swing of videos and then maybe crank it up to two a week so that should be brilliant yeah good to see um yeah same here bro like basically i want to be just make it i, I feel like vlogs are the thing for me because it just encourages me to go out and do sick stuff and then if i film it and get a video then good you know I, i'm mm, yeah. i became not so much of a fan of the ones where i just sit and talk about something because generally i, I just ended up doing it for stuff that i thought would trend and so that, that's why I think it's good that we've got this because we can talk about the stuff that is like, you know, trending and whatnot without yeah. having to like sit down and edit it for like 20 minutes because it's not like that kind of format, you know? It is like a conversational format. So it's not like me like staring down the camera like, this is the thing, I don't know, <laughs> you know? It's like, it takes like way more like planning than that. Uh, whereas vlogging, it's like, it's just an excuse to go and do fun stuff and then turn it into an experience, which I, I've always liked the idea of that. But yeah, I think that's uh, about enough for today, yeah? Yeah, I just Time got some final words just before okay. we uh, start wrapping it up. Um, Go for it. Real, real quick, um, I know I don't need to apologise, but to whoever's gotten this far, 
Um, apologies that we went a tiny bit on the political side earlier on, because I I Mate, know Glenn never apologize. Shrugging... Never apologize. Yeah, never. Okay, okay. Um, if I'm, you start apologizing, I'm... then people will just demand it. Okay. That you got say your opinion. I'm and stick annoyed. To it, so. I'm annoyed. Me personally is annoyed that we got a little <laughs> bit political earlier on, and I'm going to try and avoid it in the future because of the fact that I don't like talking about stuff like that because people get a bit like people want to avoid that they yeah, want to come here it's their problem that, yeah no, you're, no, right, no. you're right though. you're right you're yeah, right you're right they yeah. want to avoid that stuff and talk about silly conspiracy theories and stuff rather than like you know the freedom of speech serious and, you know stuff. and yeah. <laughs> at the same time the opinions we express on this podcast are hyped up more than who we are as people so don't try and take like offense to it where you're like oh he said this or he said this just leave it because you know, in the real life, we're different people, you know, so, yeah. I don't know. I mean, unlike Joe, I like to be myself on this podcast. <laughs> no, but it's, it's hyped up a little bit. It's it's cranked up just a I little guess, bit. I guess, I guess, I yeah. guess. We, we try and make we try and make it an entertaining, like, discussion, exactly. I guess, yeah. Exactly, But, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just, like, so not ashamed of any opinion I have. I'm just like, bro, if people don't like it, they can stuff it. But, like, um, I agree with what you're saying. Maybe we shouldn't bring up anything that's remotely political, I don't know, let us know what you think. If you're this far in, leave us a comment. Um, if you're this far into the podcast or video, we definitely well value your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, that's all for today. Um, this outro is way too long. I need to reword it. I keep adding stuff, so I'm just going to sum it up as follow us both on YouTube on, and Instagram. Follow Fireside Podcast on everything. All the links are going to be down, the, down below. If you could mm -hmm. like it, share it, anything like that on any platform, that would help us out a lot five star rating on spotify would be fantastic Brilliant. yeah uh any final words joe i'm gonna give a fanta to albert einstein and see what he has to say about that see if he turns into a nazi zombie <laughs> exactly <laughs> all right that's all for today catch you in the next one guys cheers Ta -da. Shot Eagle.